Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. It's Lyle Gator from Hooked on Niagara Guide Service uh, with a quick tip about trolling for salmon. So it's a beautiful May day and I, like a lot of you, wish I was out on the lake right now, but unfortunately that's just not a possibility. So what I thought I'd do is share a quick tip um, so that once we are back on the water, it'll help you put more fish in the boat. A question that I see a lot online, um, people ask me all the time, I see it in Facebook groups, on forums, is when I'm trolling for salmon, how far behind the cannonball should I have my bait? And it's a really good question. It's a very essential question whenever you're trolling. And I thought I'd give you some insight and things that I like to think about when I'm choosing how far to run my lure behind a cannonball. So there's a few different things. Um, I'm not gonna give you a, a set length because I don't believe there is one. Um, I think the distance between the cannonball and your bait sort of depends on a lot of different situations and conditions. So I'm gonna give you a few things that I like to think about when I'm choosing that length. So one thing that I like to think about is what type of bait am I throwing? So if I'm using a flasher and fly, or am I using a spoon? And typically with a flasher fly, I'm gonna run things a little bit closer to really create a lot of flash and disturbance in the water. Whereas if I'm running a spoon, I might stretch things out a little bit more, uh, 20, 30, 40, all the way back to 100 feet. Um, another thing, uh, to consider is what else do I have in the water? So if I am running a flash or fly and I also want to run some spoons, I may run the flash or fly a little bit closer and stretch the spoon out a little bit more so that when the fish disengages or if it disengages from the flasher, it has something to hit in the spoon that's slightly back in the program a little bit more. One final thing um, that determines any given day how far I run my bait behind the cannonball is when I look at my electronics. So I have my transducers rigged so that I can see my cannonballs all the way into about 35 feet of water. And that really gives me a good gauge on what the fish are doing under my boat. So if I see a lot of marks that are coming up and they're, they're following the cannonball, they're very engaged, I know that I can run my lures pretty close to the cannonball because the fish are checking out the cannonball and they're active. Similarly, if I see marks coming in from the side that are leaving very quickly and not tracking with the cannonball, I know that I need to stretch things back a little bit uh, because the fish just aren't that hot. So I hope you enjoyed these tips. Hope you find them helpful and they help me put more fish in the boat. This is Lyle Gator from Hooked on Niagara Guide Service. Thanks so much. Get outside and go fishing. <laughs> up here, he's got a big. That is moving some water. Oh man, that is a big one. It's like a dark blue color, too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs>